What's up guys, Rogue9 here, and in a recent patch update to Rainbow Six Siege, both of the automatic slug shotguns in the game, Kayet and Goyo's TCSG-12 and Maestro and Alibi's ACS-12, had their damage buffed, and of course the question is, how good are they now? Well, they will definitely be more powerful than before, but are they worth playing? Let's find out. And this video is brought to you by Nvidia and Alienware, but more on that in a little while. In their designer notes, the devs explain that both of the slug weapons are somewhat underpowered compared to the alternative weapons each of the four operators has, and as a result end up being drastically underpicked. The purpose of the buff is to address both of these issues without making the guns too strong, and to achieve this, the ACS is getting an extra 10 points of close range damage, while the TCSG goes up by 7 points. As the devs also note, the damage drop-off values are not affected, and what they mean by that is that the drop-off distances and the minimum damage for each gun remain the same. Both weapons have the same drop-off characteristics, and since they are essentially their own little hybrid weapon class, these characteristics are unique and different from all of the other guns in the game. Drop-off starts at 18 meters, just like for the SMGs, but doesn't bottom out until a massive 50 meters. That's 5 meters more than the DMR and LMG classes, and 15 meters more than the assault rifles. Why is this? I don't know. It makes no real sense for a 12 gauge slug gun to outperform a 7.62 caliber machine gun or marksman rifle in terms of range, and I don't really see any reasonable gameplay purpose for this either, but ours is not to reason why, ours is just to grind the battle pass and buy skins. The minimum damage stats at 50 meters plus are 42 points for the TCSG and 46 points for the ACS, resulting in drop-off curves that look like this. And just for context and reference, why don't we add in Buck's cameras? And as you can see, the drop-off starts much earlier for these shotguns, but is significantly less steep. And before we continue with our analysis of these two weapons, I'm delighted to announce that I've been approached by NVIDIA and Alienware to test the new NVIDIA Reflex and NVIDIA DLSS technologies available in Rainbow Six Siege. In a few weeks time, I will be releasing a dedicated video in which I demonstrate the latency reduction that I'm able to achieve on my gaming PC while playing Siege with Reflex turned on. To be able to run those tests appropriately, NVIDIA and Alienware have very graciously provided provided me with a GeForce 3080 and a 360Hz AW2521H gaming monitor, and I've been using this hardware for a couple of months now. With my current setup, I've been able to achieve an average frame rate of 337Hz with all of the graphics cranked up to ultra, and it's the smoothest that R6 has ever run for me. And that smoothness isn't only visually pleasing, but in a fast-paced game like Rainbow Six where every millisecond counts, the high refresh rate and incredible 1 millisecond response time of the Alienware 25 translates into lower system latency and easier target tracking to give you the best possible opportunity to spot, target and take down your opponents. Stay tuned in my upcoming videos for more little nuggets of info about how this new technology can help you perform better, but for now, let's get back to the slug shotguns. Comparing the pre- and post-patch versions of the two weapons, we can see that despite the same drop-off characteristics, the new versions will of course outperform the old ones at essentially all ranges until max, with decreasing advantage the further the range. And that's all nice and good, of course the guns will now hit just that little bit harder, but what does that mean practically in terms of damage per second and shots or time to kill? Here are the DPS stats for the old shotguns compared to the alternative weapons all of the relevant operators have access to, and as you can see, even the old TCSG wasn't that bad compared to Kaid's Org A3 and Goyo's Vector. But keep in mind that this DPS stat is the theoretical maximum, and it assumes that you can fire the guns at full fire rate and still hit every shot to the body. That might be relatively realistic with the AUG, and at close to medium range is also doable with the Vector, but with the TCSG this becomes quite a challenge unless you are really close to your opponent. 
The old ACS, due to its fire rate being hard locked at 300 RPM, had quite an abysmal DPS at only 295, which is the lowest in the entire game apart from the Polish RG15 sidearm and Kali's CSRX sniper rifle. But of course, both guns have been buffed and, at least in theory, the TCSG can now outdamage both the Vector and the Org A3. The ACS, on the other hand, can still not compete with the alternative… uh… jizz weapons? I'm gonna go with that. Longtime followers of the channel will by now know that while DPS is a great stat because it lets us objectively compare the damage output of various guns, it can also be pretty misleading so we need to follow up this analysis with some more practical measures, the number of shots to down or kill and the time to down or kill. I have crunched all of the numbers and let's skip all of that and jump straight to the result. What you're basically looking at here are the differences in shots to kill and time to kill from before and after the buff for each of the two guns at all ranges and we have those stats for level 1, 2 and 3 armors for both chest and limb strikes. For the TCSG, the 10% additional short range damage does very little to boost the gun's actual performance against full health opponents. Only only level 3 armors with chest strikes will require one less hit at close ranges up to 18 meters and any further than that and the benefits become rather patchy. Due to the 450 RPM approximate fire rate of the TCSG, each saved shot results in 133 milliseconds in reduced time to take down your opponent. The ACS does see stronger improvements, saving one shot against level 3 armors and level 1 and 3s when scoring limb strikes. But once the damage drop-off kicks in, the improvements again become patchy. Each saved bullet reduces the TTK by 200 milliseconds, but will it be enough to compete with the Alda and MX4? Well, not quite, but the ACS might not be just straight up trash anymore. The Alda does require more shots to down every type of opponent with every strike location, but the higher fire rate still ensures that the Alda's TTK is lower in almost every situation, although it must be noted that against level 2 armors, the ACS at short range is now just as effective and against level 1 armors at long range, the TTK is actually lower for the shotgun on paper. Against the MX4, things look even more promising. Overall, the SMG does hold the advantage at short range as well as extreme range, but level 2 armors are once again the short range exception. The new ACS is just pretty good against level 2 armors, it seems. In the mid to long distance, the ACS can, at least in theory, outperform the MX4 by quite a chunk against certain armor types and if you were ever going to realistically consider bringing the ACS on Alibi, it should probably be for situations in which you're going to hold a relatively long indoor angle. With the TCSG, we see our earlier conclusions confirmed. Against the Vector, the raw power of the improved slug shotgun leads to significantly shorter times to kill in most situations. Only against level 1 armor limb shots at short range and level 3 armor body shots in a tiny range window does the Vector win out. Against Kaid's Org, the picture is almost identical. Level 1 armor limb strikes and level 3s, just as the drop off starts, are the TCSG's weakness, but in almost all other situations, the TCSG fucking slays. As long as you can deal with the semi auto only aspect and the quite considerable recoil. Bottom line for the new and improved TCSG is that the only real downside to the gun nowadays is the handling. Slower ADS time, semi-auto only mode and more difficult recoil are the limiting factors of this gun, but if you're holding mid to long range angles and you're happy controlling this weapon, I'm borderline tempted to say that purely from a damage on target perspective, the TCSG is now a reasonably viable alternative for most experienced players given the right defensive situations. Add to this that both of the slug guns have access to the 2x sights and as surprising as this conclusion might be, after the relatively modest buff, the two slug guns seem to be in a pretty good place. They're more difficult to handle and less versatile than the alternative choices for each of the affected operators, but with enough practice, in the right situations, these guns might not only be viable alternatives, but actually the preferable choices. 
What are your thoughts on these guns? Did you ever really use them before the buff and have you checked them out since? Worth bringing out every now and then or nah? Leave your comments below and with that, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, leave a like if you learned something useful and I will see you in the next episode.